We're continuing our studies in Chapter 19 on the regulation of mammalian fuel metabolism, and in this lesson we want to consider some of our other regulatory hormones. Each of the hormones that we'll consider in this lesson are produced within adipocytes, our fat cells. Previously it was considered that these cells were simply more or less fat storage depots. These cells were simply for the storage of fat long term so that we could access them later when we had a need. What we're coming to understand, however, is that these adipocytes are actually an important part of our endocrine system. They produce several important regulatory hormones. The first we'll consider is leptin. The structure of leptin is illustrated in a ribbon diagram on the lower right of the screen. As you can see, it's primarily alpha helical and rather small in size. It was first identified as an appetite suppressor. The accumulation of fat within the adipocytes causes them to produce higher levels of leptin. The leptin hormone then travels to the brain to signal satiety, to suppress our appetites. This in turn decreases the activity of acetyl-CoA carboxylase. Remember, this is the enzyme that synthesizes malonyl-CoA. So as the concentration of malonyl-CoA decreases, so does fatty acid synthesis, and in consequence, beta-oxidation is increased. As if this hormone is telling the brain, we have plenty of food stored away, let's not store any more fuel, instead let's burn up some fuel. The next hormone we'll consider is adiponectin, again produced within adipocytes. Its role is to activate certain kinases, in particular AMP-dependent protein kinases. The name tells us that as a kinase it phosphorylates its target. It is AMP-dependent in that it's activated by AMP. So let's just take a moment to consider the logic of the activation of this enzyme. If AMP concentration is high, then it signals the cell that ATP concentration and energy levels are low. The high levels of AMP activate this protein kinase, and that kinase in turn turns on the pathways that help to produce more ATP and turns off the pathways that consume ATP. Not surprisingly, this AMP-dependent protein kinase is also inhibited by high concentrations of ATP. Again, if ATP concentration is high, the energy needs of the cell are low, and so we want to turn off this kinase so that we're not producing more ATP that we don't need. So adiponectin helps to increase the catabolism of glucose and fatty acids because these are our main ATP producing pathways. It seems to also increase sensitivity to insulin and so it may be a factor in obesity and diabetes that we'll consider in our next lesson. In the table on the lower right we have some of the effects of AMP dependent protein kinase on different tissues. It's not important you remember all of these details, simply that the, this kinase turns on the ATP producing pathways and turns off those pathways that consume ATP. Next we have the hormone resistin. It blocks the activity of insulin, as if the body uses this hormone to regulate its response to insulin. A good question is whether or not this increases in the development of obesity and contributes to insulin resistance in diabetes. This is still uncertain. You can see the ribbon diagram of resistance at the lower portion of the screen. In our next video lesson, we want to look at those factors that seem to contribute to diabetes and obesity.